Hello everybody and a very warm welcome to the Gas Tech Insights interview series with me, your host, Rebecca McLaughlin-Easton. I'm delighted to say that my special guest in this episode is Alessandro Bresciani. He is the Senior Vice President of Climate Technology Solutions at Baker Hughes. He joins me on the line from Florence. Hello and how are you, Alessandro? I'm very good and thank you very much for, uh, for the opportunity. Alessandro, let me start by asking you about one of Baker Hughes's guiding philosophies, that of you must know energy to change energy. Uh, tell me how, given your long history uh, within the energy sector, how is this informing your strategies for a lower carbon future? We like to consider ourselves a technology company. We define ourselves a technology company. So what we apply on a climate technology solution is exactly the, the same that we've been doing historically on the rest of the portfolio. So we invest in technology and uh, what we do, obviously, we work with the customer in order to pick up the needs that they have, the pain points that they have in order to provide them solution on, on those topics. So we invest in carbon capture utilization and storage. We invest in uh, hydrogen. We invest in uh, technology in a clean power solution and emission management in order to create a portfolio of solution that uh, our customers uh, can, uh, can benefit out. And then obviously we partner with the customer in order to do this implementation and uh, and provide them the the solution in on, on those on all those aspects. Alessandro, we know that collaboration on climate tech is absolutely critical. So how do you assess the role of the wider tech industry ecosystem when it comes to the development of new climate technologies? A uh, beautiful question, actually. Um, we need to start from a consideration that the technology that is today available in order to reduce the emission of CO2 is a portion of what is going to be needed in order to have uh, to go through the net zero kind of a scenario. 25% of the technology for uh, CO2 reduction are today available, are deployable. Um, the remaining uh, portion, you're going to have 35% that is going to be more or less uh, in a phase of, uh, let's say, development. And, uh, and then there's the remaining portion that is more or less around 40% is something that has to come in due course of the next uh, decade, more or less. So you don't have, there's no company today in, uh, in the overall uh, panorama of technical companies that... Uh, they have solutions for everything. So the cooperation is extremely important. You need to cooperate with uh, other technology companies. You need to cooperate with engineering company. You need to cooperate with customers in order really to create uh, the solution that is suitable for uh, a meaningful uh, resolution of certain problems that the customer has. So cooperation is key. Um, is different than in the past, is different than in the traditional business on our core businesses. You can see a little bit more open and from uh, openness for, from, uh, from a, let's say, player's perspective in getting in cooperation, in getting close one to each other, and all together trying to really drive uh, this reduction of CO2. As uh, the world on this side is changing, is changing also from a cultural perspective, and you see, and you see opportunity coming uh, in a in different shape or form than in the past. Carbon capture use and storage, or CCUS, holds great promise, as we know. But if we want to bring these solutions to global scale, the build-out requirements will be enormous. What have you learned from your experience of CCUS project delivery? There's a uh... You, you can see, you, you can divide actually the market today or the possible and potential market today in uh, two parts, okay? In particularly on CCUS, uh, CO2 capturing and CO2 storages, okay? So you got everything that is uh, coming from processes. So what we define pre-combustion for CO2, those are projects that are real today, okay? And as a real exactly uh, the reinjection of the CO2, so the storage from a, from a CO2 perspective. Um, those are projects that are coming through and you see more and more uh, players that are gonna are gonna apply, are gonna open up on those projects. they're gonna they're gonna do FID on those projects. There's a second portion of uh, the world on the carbon capturing, which is everything that is possible 
source combustibles is a little bit more difficult to implement. So you need uh, uh, to shape out uh, the right technology and the right economics in order to make a project going in FID. Uh, and that is uh, more uh, today an activity that is related to feasibility study pre-feed, also uh, to allow the customers to go and uh, be provide them the, all the information, all the technical so all the technical information that they need in order to uh, submit for uh, for funding, submit for financing, submit uh, uh, the files, obviously, to to receive all the incentives that are needed in this moment to make those projects uh, suitable. So there's these two two portions there, uh, but definitely there's uh, more attention. There's an acceleration in the market. There's more appetite uh, that is happening, and then we can talk geographically because obviously the markets are moving slightly different in the different geography. But you can see Australia, you can see Middle East, you can see North of Europe and Europe in general and in particular in North America that are really moving from a, from a market perspective. So uh, that's a little bit the, the situation in the landscape today. Aside from CCUS, what are the climate technologies that excite you the most and why? Uh, difficult to answer, honestly, on, on the specific. Uh, we do believe uh, in our company on a portfolio of solutions. Uh, there's no silver bullet in this moment that we can identify for, uh, for uh, resolving the problem of the emissions from a technical standpoint, obviously. Uh, we do believe in the portfolio. So I'm pretty excited about the entire portfolio that we have been building, obviously, because uh, we do believe that selection of companies where we've been investing, uh, are uh, they have a good potential in order to develop the, their, uh, the, project, the, the product that we have uh, identified and the technology that we have identified. Um, we are progressing across the board, the entire development of uh, and the maturity of uh, uh, the, the technology are, are going, are moving. So we are making progress every single day. So I'm excited about the portfolio we are building. Then obviously across the portfolio, there's going to be few technologies that are going to be much more successful than others. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're going to have a I'm pretty, pretty convinced that at the end, we're going to have a pretty, pretty good portfolio to play in the sector. Finally, Alessandro, we're delighted that Baker Hughes has renewed its partnership with Gastech for 2023. Uh, why do you consider Gastech to be a valuable industry platform? Gastech is, uh, is the place to be, uh, fundamentally. We continue to renew our participation to Gastech and our commitment to Gastech. Uh, um, gas is an important uh, um, source of uh, energy not only on the transition, but even going forward. We do believe that gas is going to be uh, present uh, in, in our future, in our, uh, let's say, also for the next generation, it's going to be there. Um, we just need to apply new technology in order to make the gas uh, more suitable for the new needs that this planet has. And so we are uh, deeply committed to, to gas tech because obviously the evolution of the gas industry is going to go with the new technology, is going to go with the in parallel of our investment as well. And there we sadly have to leave our conversation, Alessandro, but it was great to chat to you. Thank you for joining me from Italy and I'll see you soon at Gastech. Thank you very much, Rebecca, for the opportunity. I'm pleased to be here today.